Hey, what's up? So I'm working on this project over here that I will share more details about later. But for now, I made this quick little render as a, just a test render for fun, you know, as an exercise. And I got a lot of questions about like, how do you get that kind of like cinematic look in renders? So uh, there's a lot of stuff that can make something look cinematic. But today I just wanna focus on the factors and techniques that I primarily focus on when I'm going for that look. And that is aspect ratio and cinematic bars. They kind of go together. Composition and lighting, those also go hand in hand. And depth of field and lens effects. The depth of field is a big part of getting that cinematic look, but it's also part of the whole lens quirks family, which are things like bokeh, chromatic aberration, and lens flares. And I'll touch on all that later on in this video. So my knowledge, ge just generally speaking, my knowledge on a lot of the cinematic stuff is like the technical know-how is very limited. Like I just pick up things here and there from videos and explanations and from friends and from people that I learn. And then I just apply that to my work. So I just really like movies and cinematography, like and, and you know, art books and like how movies are made and all that kind of stuff. So I like that stuff. And I just get a lot of inspiration from that. So I have this short scene that I'm working on and I'll try to use this one small part to demo as much of these little techniques as I can. Uh, so the first part is aspect ratio and the usual aspect ratio for a lot of this stuff is um, 16 by nine and you know, that's like the default, that's what I use. But there's a whole chart that explains the past and current commonly used aspect ratios that I would just highly recommend testing out and trying and seeing how it works for you. Sometimes these ultra wide shots can look like more cinematic, but but on the opposite side, if you're going for a more vintage look, you can use the like four by three aspect ratio. So with aspect ratios, you also get one of the first super common tricks that people use to get uh, a cinematic look in their paintings or in their renders or whatever. And that is cinematic bars, like black bars at the bottom and the top. Uh, for the longest time, I just kind of added them arbitrarily. Uh, but once I saw this media division video on anamorphic lenses, like this one hour long, super extensive, super just information packed video on specifically anamorphic lenses. And then they also go into like cinema history and like, it, it's just, if you really like this kind of stuff, if you're into it, I highly recommend watching it. Most of the stuff that I'm gonna talk about, I learned from that video anyway. So definitely worth checking out, but you know, check it out afterwards, <laughs> not, not right now. Um, so I'm gonna show you in Photoshop how I just quickly apply those on top of like a standard 16 by nine render. And then I'll also show you in Blender how you can kind of parent a cinematic bar plate to the camera and then kind of have a real time cinematic bar thing always there when you're flying the camera around the character so let's just let's jump into that right now and i'll show you how i do that all right so this is the scene that i'm working with uh trying not to spoil too much with <laughs> how much i show but uh let's see i have my character here selected let's just add a camera right here here it is let me just for the heck of it uh turn on screencast keys so let me grab this camera move it back a bit no, actually, I'll use this shot for reference, and then this shot will just be like a outside shot. Okay, so I think right now we have it set to the standard 19 by 20, 16 by 9 ratio. So let me let me turn on uh, EV so we can. So I have some lighting here, and kind of jumping ahead with lighting and composition. But I'm just gonna get a shot just so that I can do the the little demo on uh, cinematic bars. So let's say, I mean, that looks kind of cool. Or maybe that, yeah. Okay. Like keeping in mind, if I want to add cinematic bars on top and the bottom, I don't want it to like cut his head off too much. This is like a mini composition tutorial, I guess, too. But let's say that looks good, and let me maybe add another light just to so it's kind of dark. Oh, that's kind of nice. Okay be like here yeah we'll just keep it like that and so let's render that and I'll go into Photoshop and show you how I would add the cinematic bars all right cool so now here in Photoshop I'm gonna just brighten it up a bit because it's a little dark go straight in here control or control L to brighten it up it's a little gross but it's okay so I just make a new layer on top and then with the marquee tool 
fill with black and then um, I'll add a mask on top of that and then again do a little marquee well actually let's do this let's pick like this much and then fill that with black so it cancels out and then you can just duplicate the layer and then flip vertical and you have bars on the top and bottom and uh, yeah that's kind of it so this is how you can add them in Photoshop really quickly can we merge this yeah so you can have these and you can just like use them in any other scenes that's how I do it in Photoshop real quick and now let me show you how to do it in blender I have a theory on how to do it so I'm gonna try so I'm just gonna move this over I'm gonna reset the camera yeah and control s cursor to selected and from here I'll make a plane that is like that and I'll just try to size that to the size of the camera like that so then it's covering the whole um, frame of the camera I can actually judge here too uh, let's give it a material well, actually what we can do is we can make it an emission texture and then that'll just give us nothing so we'll do an emission like that make it black all right cool and um, so that's kind of going off of what we had in Photoshop as I showed earlier let me make sure it's right on on the front so it needs to be sized up a bit okay and then with it selected we'll do shift click on the camera control P to parent and parent to the object so now when we move the camera it moves with it except for if something gets in front of the camera that's not it but let's just go with this for now and then since we have it parented already all we have to do is click on the thing go into edit mode and then this is super dirty and like rough I'm sure there's it's not like the ideal way to um, like it's not procedural so if you wanted to change it on the fly probably not as easy but for just a quick cinematic bar camera that can fly around I think this is uh, a neat effect if you want to try it out so I just added a loop cut you can see down here control R adds a loop cut oh wait no make the loop cut before clicking anything scroll up on the wheel once is it not recording the uh, scroll wheel okay there we go that should do it yeah and then I'm gonna select the edges here move them up like that I think that's good and then select the face and delete it delete it all right cool so then we kind of have this like live interactive camera where if we move it we can it's always going to be like cinematic bars and then if we want to just make it a little bit easier to see compositionally what we're working with and what's inside and what's not inside the frame I'll select the camera go into the passport toe and turn it up like that there we go so there and now whoop. I checked it there we go so yeah so you can like set your shot up kind of get a similar shot it's uh the ooh. Uh, so I poked around a little bit and uh, one thing I tried is I just tried to bring in the bars like all the way back on the camera to see if that would do anything and you can what's cool is that you can kind of scale them up and down and that gives you that effect which is neat but I realized that I had a volume turned on in Eevee so it was kind of doing things and scattering the light in a way that wasn't really helping me so as soon as I turned the volume off and even with the bloom on and everything like that uh, it's still kind of um, I think it still works and let's see yeah now see it kind of reaches the end there so we turn the bloom off it's all right uh, so it's a maybe it's not the best in Eevee but in cycles it works pretty well so if we just drop into cycles and take a look at that uh, it works pretty well here as well so uh, yeah I don't know play around with it see if it works for you if it doesn't you know you can always use the Photoshop method the next technique is composition and lighting this is kind of a deep subject in art and 
you know, photography and cinema and all that kind of stuff. But to keep things simple for this video, the best advice that I can give to learn this is to just watch movies and copy them. Uh, you can also look up screenshots for your favorite movies to do master studies, uh, whether it's like, you know, painting or in renders. Uh, the more you do this over time, you'll build up your reference library and start to recognize when you're onto something that looks cinematic based on just like the stuff that you've been looking at and the stuff that you're used to seeing. One thing to think about is how you can use lighting and composition to direct where you want the audience to look. So if you kind of have a narrative in your shot going on, uh, you can use lighting and the composition to point where you want the audience to look at and where you don't want them to look at. So for example, in this shot from 2001 A Space Odyssey, uh, the focus is purely, there's like this really bright focus on the character's face and then the rest is just kind of like in shadow. And I know for like, you know, if you're modeling stuff and if you want the, if you want people to see everything, all the details, it's kind of a sacrifice. But if you want to get that cinematic look, that's kind of like something to try is to just go for very limited lighting or just one source of lighting or just two source of lighting, things like that to really frame like what you want people to look at. I, I'd actually recommend Gleb Alexandrov's video on cinematic lighting and Blender Guru's talk at the Blender conference about the same subject. They do a way better job at explaining and demoing this stuff in Blender. And then with compositions, there's some really common things that you can try in your renders depending on what you're trying to depict. So for example, in movies when characters are talking, there's like this rule of thirds shot composition on the main character that's talking and you know where like their head is like in the left or right third of the frame and then the character that they're talking to is on the opposite side and their head is just kind of like in shadow blurred out and really just like framing the the focus of the character that we're looking at and then, you know there's a lot of like little things you can examine and talk about and study in cinematic compositions and just, I would recommend trying all of it. I would recommend just copying it exactly as is. Even if you don't get it, just copy it if you if you can. And then through the process of copying it, you'll kind of you'll kind of you know understand it a little bit better. Like that's the best advice I can give. So, like for example, the, like this shot of the from 2001: A Space Odyssey, I I like and I think it looks really interesting. So, as again as an exercise, let's just try it here in the the scene that I have set up, and let's see how it if we can kind of get a similar look there. Okay, so we have our camera and I just removed the like little cinematic bars uh, plate that I had. So we have our camera and let me try to use the shot, this one as reference for how to make it look. So I'm just gonna try to align it somewhat similarly and I'll just keep the character posed in the same way. Kinda wanna get his hand in this shot too. It's, it's okay if it cuts off the top of the arm like that. All right, so let's just turn off all the lights and let's add a new light. And it looks like there's like a small area light behind them, just from what I'm looking at. Something like that. Let's get the color. This is not exactly the same set, so the lighting won't be exactly the same way, but whatever. And then uh, I'm going to duplicate this light and move it back to be in front of the character. And we'll make that a spotlight, maybe. Shrink down the radius a bit. And so you can, you know, if you're doing this yourself, like if you're referencing something, you can stop and be like, no, this is the effect that I want and I'm not going to push it any further. Or, or you can take it further and copy it exactly. And then even if you do that, it's like seen as an homage or like a reference and it's not necessarily a bad thing. Might need to be brighter bring down the spot angle size. And now this light in the reference is probably coming from some kind of like, it looks like the light is going through like a shape and then it's creating this interesting shape on their face. See if I can shrink it, yeah, okay. So I just kind of scaled it on a Z and squished it. We turn it, that looks kind of cool. Hey, that looks really neat. Maybe turn up the blend a little. I'm gonna make this brighter, like 50. Try to make this even brighter like that. And then there is just a general, I think. I'll just copy this area light and move it back. 
and it looks like it's from underneath him. And that's kind of cool. I've actually never really tried doing a master study in Blender, so I'm learning, kind of learning with y'all. Looks like there's there's a couple colors, but it's not so much as a blue as it is like a purple almost, because his skin is purple too. But there's a bunch of like you know subsurface scattering and all this other kind of stuff going on. As a practice, as a study, this is cool. Let's let's see if we make this like super bright. Whoa. So there's an example of copying the lighting from something. And this is interesting, right? Like naturally looking at this, it will make you want to look at the eyes first. And if we bring the camera in closer, kind of adjust it. Th this is just my personal preference. This is kind of the, 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 these are the kind of shots that I like to make. Now, this is just a really interesting lighting setup that almost kind of looks good from any angle, I think. And it really puts the emphasis on their eyes, whereas before it didn't. If we turn that light off, you look at them and they're probably just spacing out but you put that on you put that light on them now they look like there's a little bit more motion behind the eyes you know like they're studying or they're focusing on something no it has a little bit more narrative to it so yeah definitely something to try and i highly recommend it if you want to learn a little bit more try to get your shots to look a little bit more cinematic the third thing is depth of field and in general lens quirks lens effects things like that and by lens quirks what i mean is the little imperfections that you get from real physical lenses on cameras and we're just so used to seeing things like chromatic aberration and lens flares which are essentially like defects in lenses they're not good like it's, it's not like what you want but because movies are filmed on those lenses we're so used to seeing them and associating that with like cinema and high budget and things like that and so when we can replicate that it makes things just like to our brain feel more cinematic glub has a good video on this as well where he talks about uh, bokeh specifically which is which kind of comes from the depth of field effect and also the media division video i mentioned earlier when they talk about anamorphic lenses they talk all about what gives them those like very specific characteristics. They do a way better job, again, covering all that stuff really well. I highly recommend it. Uh, there's even people who make like add-ons that simulate the bokeh from an anamorphic lens or will make a physical lens that the camera looks through in Blender, which is awesome. So let's jump back into our scene and I'll show you how to get the bokeh effect. And just like earlier, I'll also show how you can get the chromatic aberration and grain, the film grain. In, uh, in Blender and in Photoshop. All right, so we're back in our little scene here with the lighting. I think the best way to show this is to show the what the character is looking at because there's all these like little city lights and stuff like that. So let's take our camera and I think we still have it. Yep, I'll just kind of turn it around like this and let's turn on some of our lighting. Turned off a lot of the, yeah, let's, let's get that lighting back in. Let me just hide some things so that we see. All right, there we go, that's good. That's what we want. Uh, okay, that's good. I'm gonna take this light here and put it behind him. So there's just some, yeah. I think the way I had it in that little, is I had like a light here. And this light could be useful if we just focus it on like, kind of make it like a rim light almost. Uh, we have a bunch of cameras in the distance. So what I do have here is I have a focus, which is just an empty. So if you click shift A, empty, and it's a plain axis. So I have this empty here, and a lot of times you can use this to help you help the camera focus on that instead of like a specific thing, which isn't always accurate. So we'll put that, I don't know, like on his head or something. And we'll jump into our camera here. Let's zoom in. And in the camera settings, we want to turn on depth of field. All right, so you're starting to kind of see the effect here. And the focus, we will make it the focus. There we go. It, the f-stop is set by default to 2.8. If you make that smaller, if you make that two, the bokeh gets a little bit bigger. So for example, with anamorphic lenses, I think the stand, the, the usual like quirk or the characteristics about them is that the ratio, instead of one, it's two. So when we make this two, it squeezes it because anamorphic lenses, like again, that media division will do a great job explaining it. I'm just gonna give you the brief, like what I remember about it. But that the way that the lenses film, they film like squished and then they get unsquished or something like that, or it's just a just a very specific thing about that lens. Uh, so in that render earlier that I mentioned, I used that effect to get the bokeh. 
so let's see if we get back into the camera we kind of move around there we go maybe bring a little closer get a little in like that looks cool I might move the lighting a bit uh, I think I think I'll remove this light actually uh, I'm gonna change the color of this to match the lights that we see in the distance and again we'll just bring this back to 1080 so it's 16 by 9 and then we can add the cinematic bars and all this kind of stuff so if we render this as is all right looks good and then so if we want to add like the grain and the chromatic aberration the lens distortion stuff we can go into the compositing let's do shift a lens distortion and then basically for the noise you just turn on jitter and you can see it gives it like a, a color noise so it's like red green blue kind of pixels and you can do uh, dispersion which is what will give it the chromatic aberration so if we do one you'll see it's like very very strong so you never want to do one 0 0.1 interesting this looks this is giving me like judge dread vibes 0 0.01 but that is it's subtle it's there if maybe if we turn off the jitter you can kind of see it on the edge here and it's one of those effects you don't want to overdo unless you unless you want to do it on purpose as long as it's there the more subtle it is the more like subtle cinematic feel it has without feeling uh, like forced or too fake that's how you would do that in Photoshop and then you can add the jitter back on and then you can just render that out and again just do the cinematic bars or whatever on top so but if we were to do this in uh, Photoshop let me show you how I would do that so if we pop open Photoshop, this doesn't have the, oh wait, this does this have the, I think this has the chromatic aberration. I should have, yeah, it does. Let me just turn that off completely. And then in Photoshop, the way that I usually add uh, grain and chromatic aberration at the same time, I usually do that at the end. I'll just use the marquee tool, select the whole shot, fill with gray. And this is something I used to apply to a lot of like concept art and stuff like that because uh, like, if you're just doing concept art that you want to look like it's for a movie or something or cinematic again usually I, i've just heard like a long time ago like concept art if you're doing it for a film you want to make it look like it's already in the film so then the people you know the directors or whatever get a better idea of how it would look like in the film anyway so if we go here we go to noise add noise and then here you can make it like the color noise that was in blender or you can make it monochromatic you know it's a preference thing it really doesn't I think make a big difference it looks like it's a little bit more fine when it's in color I usually keep it like 10 just keep it subtle and then in the adjustment layers overlay feels a little bit like harsher soft light is a little bit more subtle so let's do it soft light keep it like 30% so then it's like really subtle it's there uh, but it's not like in your face and grain is another one of those things that is explained in that anamorphic lens video they talk about like the history of grain where grain kind of comes from why like old western films have like a high grain amount and why like 4k like 8k movies kind of have less grain and then how grain is added back on top of things you know just to make it look and feel more cinematic all that kind of stuff uh and then for chromatic aberration we'll just go with the original make sure you have the image selected go to filter lens correction and if you just start changing the red fringe to negative and change the blue fringe to positive, I think it should work. It should kind of be already happening. Kind of, yeah, it's, you can see it like nudged a little bit. So it's kind of happening. It, you can kind of see it on the, on the edges of the bokeh, but there's not a lot of like things in the side of the frame. So it's just not as noticeable, but that's what you want. You don't want it to be like, at least, in my opinion, personally, I don't try to make that effect really strong. It's like a very subtle subconscious effect that, and then when people see that, they'll be like, oh, that looks kind of cinematic. Like, I don't know why, <laughs> it just does. And so we'll just take our cinematic bars that we made earlier, stick it on top. Uh, one last thing to kind of keep in mind, and this is purely a personal preference, and that's just like the color balance, the color grading. And if I want to just do a quick color wash, because one thing I don't like is, when the black cinematic bars that are pure black uh, are just as dark as the black in the image. Like we can still see there's a difference here, but let's adjust it a little bit more. So I'm gonna select the marquee tool again, fill with just a, uh, like a blue, a very light gray blue wash like that. 
we'll make that lighten or soft light no lighten yeah so then that it only really affects the shadows and we'll just bring it down to like a three percent but it's really subtle and you can make it orange or brown or whatever color you prefer but it's just a really subtle wash over the shadows so that they're not as uh dark and you can probably also adjust that with like curves and, and, and levels and all that kind of stuff but for a quick render like this to make it look cinematic uh, I would do that. I hope that was informative. I hope you were able to kind of keep up. So in conclusion, the three or five biggest things that I think about when I'm doing, when I'm trying to make my renders look cinematic, that is, so an aspect ratio, the cinematic bars that kind of go along with that, composition and lighting. Again, kind of a deep subject, but just a, I hope I was able to give you at least a couple things to try and play around with and uh, learn from copying movies all that kind of stuff a really great way to just get right into it and then depth of field and lens effects like specifically with bokeh and the bokeh blurring of lights behind the character well i hope all of that was informative and gave you the information you were looking for uh, if you have any questions or comments feel free to drop those down below and if you like this video and you want to see more kind of content like this or if you just want to follow my work subscribe that's definitely the way to do that you can also follow me on like you know all the socials and uh, if you want to support me i got a gum rope i got a patreon other than that thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one peace